Hey guys, today is my next raw advice video. This is number three in the series of trying to do this once a week and I've stuck to it. I did not get nearly as many questions in this video, so ask me your questions if you have any, any topic, anything, questions about me, questions about you, questions about anything, go ahead and ask and I'm just going to get started. First question is a long one and it is from Allie Wolf and the question is, I'm in college and I'm going to be studying abroad next year for the full year. I'm going to be across the sea so a very, very long ways away. I've been with my boyfriend for eight months now and just wanted your advice on how to carry the relationship and what you think would help us. Neither of us have any intention of breaking up with one another and we both know that I will be gone for a rather long time. I completely trust him and he completely trusts me. I don't have any doubts that you will cheat on me or anything like that. It's just going to be hard not seeing him in person and just being with one another. The simple things, you know, like a kiss on the cheek or holding hands. Anyway, I know this was long, but I really value your opinion and wanted to know what you think of our situation. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, here is my answer. I was in a long distance relationship with my high school boyfriend for three or four years. We were four, I think. Yeah, three or four years, yeah. We were together for a long time, and the way that we made it work was that we talked as often as possible. There was no Skype back when we were together, so Skype would make it a thousand times easier. Just Skype with each other, try to do it every single day. You can make time for other things, make time to Skype each other. Make sure you talk often. Um, make sure that you are sharing all of the things that you're doing, because when you guys are apart and separate from each other, you're both gonna change a lot. I noticed that. I. I changed so much and he changed so much, but we didn't change together, we changed apart. And because we didn't share everything with each other, we changed for the worse of our relationship. So make sure you guys share a lot of the things you're doing with each other often. Uh, make sure that everything that you guys talk, I mean, talk about everything. Talk about what you did in your day. Talk about changes you're gonna make. If you're gonna go to, you know, take a class, if you're starting to get interested in something else, because if you don't stay on the same page, you'll start to drift apart. It's just natural as your two are totally separate and you'll both become independent on your own so as long as you guys talk often text all the time really that's my best advice just to Skype often talk often text often and um, if you guys are feeling at any point that things are kind of drifting apart well you know talk about that make sure that the other person is aware of it but as long as you guys are on the same page and you really want to make it work you can make it work because if you want to you will Tanya Barnett asks, Christy, I think I remember you talking about going to church all the time when you were younger. Do you still go? Do you believe in God? Do you and your husband share the same beliefs? You said nothing was off limits, and I'm curious. I think you're hilarious. I found you through Marie. Uh, thank you so much. I'm not going to read the rest of that because it's for me. Do I, yeah, I went to church all the time when I was younger. I was a Sunday school teacher. Uh, I was part of youth group. I was part of everything. I mean, I was very, very, very into church. Um, I do not still go to church. My sister and my dad do every weekend and they really try to get me to go. I stopped going to church when my mom died. Um, I still believe in God, yeah. And I don't want to hear anything in the comments negative about God. I will delete those comments right off the bat. Not because I'm intolerant of other people's beliefs, but because you telling me that God isn't real isn't going to make me believe that he's not. <laughs> so uh, there's, there's this whole debate. I'm not saying any one religion is better than the other. I don't give a fuck what other people believe in. Like really, I'm not saying that I don't believe, I, I just honestly, this is how, this is my thought on religion and I'm going to just throw it out there. Religious people to non-religious people. Who gives a fuck? I get, I get it. But if you believe, believe. Do, you do that. You believe all you want. You go to church, you, you pray, you do what you want to do. Pushing your religious beliefs on other I honestly don't know if that's ever worked. I honestly, I don't know if I've ever seen it work. So I say, believe what you believe. I have some hard time with it. I, I, I struggle. I'm not saying that, that I ever think in my mind that I don't believe, but in 2014 society, things that Christianity believes are not necessarily popular belief in this day and age. And if you believe those things, then you're, you know, intolerant and you're blah, 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 blah. I don't want to talk about any of that. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and if you don't believe it, I, who gives a shit? <laughs> if you think that I am, you know, honestly, any any other beliefs on religion, believe what you want to believe. That's totally fine with me. If you if you believe all that other stuff, I don't care. Fine. If you don't believe in what I don't care, if you don't believe what I believe, I get it. I totally understand why people don't believe. My husband does not believe in God. Nope, he is an atheist. He. He has no, he doesn't really believe that there's anything greater out there. And that's hard, being married to somebody who doesn't believe when you are one. Uh, 
well, you, I am one. I am a believer. Uh, but yeah, he he doesn't at all. Um, so it's it's a tough. That's a tough part. He doesn't bash God in front of me. I mean, he will make jokes and stuff. But I'm not super religious. I don't go to church because I just don't like church. I don't like the dynamic of it. I feel weird there. Uh, I did go to church with Marie once, and the church that she went to was really. It was way better, and um, I really liked it. I felt like it was way more down to earth. I'm not saying that the, that the church that my family goes to isn't, but it just wasn't, it's just not my cup of tea. I, I get it, I get why people go, but I don't go because it makes me feel really awkward. And I love God and I do believe in stuff, but I don't wanna, I don't know. I just, I just would rather not go to church. I used to go all the time and I was in the front, hands raised and praising Jesus and I think that's cool and all. But that church that I was going to got real weird and they started doing some things that I feel like, why are you, the fuck are you doing this at church? This is stupid. Like, why are you playing these dumbass games? I don't know. It was just really dumb. It was clickish. It was dumb. So I stopped going there because I just, after my mom died, I basically said, fuck the world and just became a total punk rocking scene kid fucking weirdo. And uh, I'm not saying if you're like that, you're weird, but I was... I was fucking far gone. So, but yeah, I, uh, no, I don't go to church. I would like to probably maybe go. Honestly, it's more or less that I just don't like going. I don't like going to church on Sundays. I think it's really fucking boring. And I like learning about God, and I think that I believe in God, and I believe in the Bible, but I, I don't want to go hang out at a church. I don't know. I believe that maybe, <laughs> it is a controversial topic, but there's nothing, you know, if you don't like it, well, Oh, I didn't even read this comment. Mrs. ARC Beauty says, Thank you so much for answering my question. You've helped me so much. I even went to school today and told them that we're not friends anymore again. Thank you so much. You lifted a weight off my shoulders. Well, shit. That's exactly what I hope to do. If, if you, you know, I, I hope that I'm giving you the right advice here. But hey, I am so glad that I made you feel better. Uh, Hannah Riley asks, You mentioned about you and your husband's sex life and how he isn't deprived, but you don't have much of a sex drive. Doesn't he feel bad that you're doing something you don't want to do? No. <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't feel bad about it. It's not like he's forcing me by any means. If I'm like, no, then he doesn't. But I try not to do that. I, I he, he gets it. We've had many a conversation about how literally it's not there. Some days it's totally there and I'm like, jumping his bones. Some days I'm like, eh, take it or leave it. I feel like that's kind of normal. But no, he doesn't, it's not like that. There's not never a time where he's like, come on, come on, come on. Like, it's not like that. It's, it's, I, I, it, once we're doing it, I'm really glad we are. It's just the getting started part. I'm sweating my balls off right now. It is hot in here. All that Wisconsin 14 says, do you have a college degree? No, I do not have a college degree. I had no interest in going to college. Um, if I had, I know I would just be in a buttload of debt and I would be a half chef, half nurse, half dental hygienist, half, you know, this, half that. I honestly have changed my mind so many times on what I want to do. I finally figured out that what I want to do in life is work on social media and be a makeup artist. And that probably doesn't take much school. Don't need schooling to do that stuff. If you want to work at certain places you do, but no, I have zero interest in going to college. And you know, some people it's really, really important to them. It's just never been important to me. Melissa McDougall asks, where do you get your tape and hair extensions? I buy them from a website, well I haven't bought mine in a long time, I just bleach the ones I have, but I got them from a website called uh, locksandbonds.com and I will put the link and all the information in the description of this video, but they've always been great to me, excellent shipping, good customer service, the hair is excellent quality, lasts a really long time, that's the best place I've found. FBH16 asks, there is a girl that at school that just forced herself into the group. She is not a nice person. She's rude, inconsiderate, and self-centered. She's been with us for nearly two years and everyone in the group apart from one person dislikes her. I just want to know how to deal with her. I'm leaving school in a few months and I don't, and I know I won't speak to her ever again, but for now, how do I deal with it? I've tried everything. Well, the way I would deal with somebody like that is it's hard for me to tell you what to say because in the situation it just kind of what comes out of your mouth is what you should say. Um, but here's here's what I would do. So if she, you, you said she's rude, inconsiderate, and self-centered. Well, I'd like to know how she's being those things. Like is she, is she when you say she's rude, is she like, eh, don't talk to me. Like is she rude like that? Like what is she doing? Because if somebody talked to me that way, I'd probably say like, do you have a problem with me? And then if they started, you know, oh no, why? Well, because you see, you know, 
because you, you you're a little hostile towards me and just want to know did I do something wrong did I what it what uh, there's a problem and they might be like no what make you think that well you kind of snapped at me and so you know if you you know if you're mad at me I'd like to know otherwise what's the deal and sometimes or somebody will have like a look on their face and I'll say you know what's is there something going on what's with your face you know what's with the look on your face because you kind of look like we just ate a dog turd or something you ask them sometimes that's how I handle the situation sometimes if somebody's being shitty to me I'll ask them like what's what's the deal and then if they're like I don't know I'm just really upset because oh, blah, blah. you know maybe they have something going on that you don't know or maybe they're just a huge bitch if they're just a huge bitch uh, I would just literally ignore them I don't know I'm that kind of person who I don't waste my time on somebody that I don't care about I'm not like a bitch at all but I would honestly just not even talk to them don't put yourself in that situation I know that you're part of the group but uh I don't know, I, I'm that type that just would just phase them out, <laughs> just not talk to them because uh, shortly, here, soon, you're not going to have to. If nobody likes her and only one person does, well, maybe talk to that other person and be like, look, what's the deal here? Like, why is she such a bitch to us? Why is she self-centered and rude all the time? I ask, you know, I, don't be afraid to ask because I'm telling you, sometimes just asking that question like, what's your problem with me? Do you have a problem with me? Or why are you or if, she, if you hear her say something rude to somebody else call her out be like hey be nice that's not very nice you you don't have to be like you fucking bitch be nice but you can say like you know it's okay to call somebody out in a nice way you don't want to get in a fucking fist fight but just say like chill out like be nice you know that's what i would do it's hard for me because i don't I don't know, I, I don't really associate much with people like that, so I, I'm really sorry. I, that's kind of what I would do, but then again, I... <laughs> Amy By Bygrave, I hope I'm saying that right. Do you have any tips for handling stress? Going through mocks for my exams at the minute, 20 odd exams crammed into two weeks, oh god. Any advice would be appreciated because in the future I prefer not to break down before I'm in the exam hall like I did this morning. Uh, damn, handling stress, I've talked about that in the past, no. Uh, stress is really hard. I don't handle it very well. I kind of like stay up at night and stew over it. But get all your shit done. Like if that means, what, and now, now I get stressed out over not putting up YouTube videos. That sounds really weird, but it stresses me out big time. So you know what I do? I'm on my lunch break right now filming this YouTube video. Getting my stuff done, staying up, doing all the things I need to do, planning and preparing, managing my time. Those things are really good at helping me de-stress. It's when I get stressed out that I start to cave in and shut everybody out. Sometimes when I get stressed out, I'm like, oh, I've got this to do, this, 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 and I just don't do any of it. That's the way worse thing to do because then you're 10 times more stressed out and everything's just really bad. So I would make sure, take care of all your shit. I've said it in the past, clean your house, clean your space, get everything organized and clean. And honestly, it makes you feel so much better. I just say that the most important thing to do is take care of all of your business. Uh, exams are stressful. There's not a lot I can tell you on that front. Uh, study, uh, baths don't help me out that much. Sometimes it's nice just to calm down, but baths aren't like my thing, but some people really find them relaxing and calming. I don't do my stress relieving that way. I kind of just work really hard on certain things and get a lot of my stuff done. Get all your bills paid, get all your stuff done, get all the other stuff in your life done so that you don't have extra stress looming over you. And that's really the best advice that I have. R. Walsh asks, a birth doula? That's awesome. I bet it's really amazing. Yeah, I, I was a birth doula that I did all the time. I'm not like a active, like advertising myself birth doula right now. Uh, but yeah, I, I have been to many, 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 many births. April Sings asks, Christy, I'm obsessed with your videos. I was thir I'm 13. I was wondering if you could integrate a quick and natural but flattering makeup tutorial for school. I'm trying to shed some new light on my everyday look. Also, a cheaper drugstore foundation and concealer recommendation for drier skin and a good drugstore primer. I don't know what you're using right now, um, but a good, cheaper drugstore foundation and concealer. Um, the... Oh, concealer's a hard one. I've heard that the True Match concealer is good and dewy. I've never used it though. Uh, also, I love the Revlon Color Stay. That's my biggest, best recommendation. It's a little more spendy for drugstore. Um, the CoverGirl 3-in-1 foundation is really good in full, full coverage, and that is less expensive than the other. <coughs> I do not use primer, so I personally cannot recommend a good primer for you. I've heard a good primer is using, uh, mil is it Milk of Magnesia? 
I think Milk of Magnesia, it's not a primer, it's not makeup, but it is a product that I believe is for like sour stomach and you can use it for your skin and I've heard it's a good primer. It's hard for me to recommend a good primer to you because I am not a primer person, don't like them. I love Huskies says, relationship question. I know that playing hard to get is something guys like, but it's never been something I've had to try hard at because I'm insecure as hell and I don't want to seem annoying. So I don't have the problem of texting, texting guys constantly and or even wanting to. I am as secure as I've ever been in a relationship I have now. Not that it's super secure, just the most secure I've ever been. And we've been together long enough now that I know it's serious. Oh my god, I'm rambling and getting so off track. I'm probably confusing the fact out of you, I'm sorry. Anyway, my point is, there are no head games. The chase is over. We are committed to, to each other. And my question is, do guys still want you to play hard to get when they've already gotten you? Wouldn't that be annoying? What I mean by playing hard to get is, to get a guy, in my opinion, just don't be clingy. They don't want clingy. In a relationship, they don't want jealous. And that's my opinion. And other people may totally disagree and be like, oh, you're meh. Mind games aside, it's not a mind game. Just don't be overly protective and jealous. I don't think that that's ever becoming on anybody. I think that you don't have to play hard to get because you're gotten. Uh, but I would say just don't don't read his text messages. I mean, if you trust him, if there's a level of mistrust, if he's cheated on you or something, that's a different story. I'm not saying to go through his shit, but leave him if that's the case. Don't Just don't waffle on with this bullshit. But if you guys trust each other and you love each other and you're in you know, a committed relationship and everything's good, you don't need... I, I think that a mistake that some girls make is that, oh, are you looking at her? Well, what, do you think she's prettier than me? Well, fuck. Like, you can text her, don't text her, she's your ex-girlfriend, you can't even talk to her. Don't do that kind of thing. It's just, or, or just like constantly on their ass about stuff. I don't like girls, I'm not saying that if you do that you're like a bad girlfriend, but I am the least jealous person I've ever known. I literally could give ten shits less. Even if a girl is flirting with my husband, it's like, it's just innocent flirting. Like, if he acts on it, well then he can go fuck off somewhere else. But. If, if it's just innocent flirting or chatting or, you know, it's like, it's no big deal. But I think in a relationship, you don't have to, there's no mind games or anything. Just understand that as long as you trust each other and there's no mistrust or any lying or any infidelity in the relationship, I would say that you don't have to play hard to get anymore. But, you know, I would say definitely don't be clingy and, uh, and constantly on them and you know paying attention to every little thing that they do and blah, blah 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 that's unattractive in a relationship but no you don't have to play hard to get i mean like in the relationship that i'm in the super secure relationship that i'm in you know, we've been together for 10 years and uh five years married uh i mean shit we'll poop in front of each other with the fucking door open and fart in front of each other and there's nothing i hide i've been completely naked in front of this guy walking around with my big floppy shit hanging out so he, he honestly like our relationship is real secure because I would never do that with anybody else, but I would say, no, you don't have to play any mind games. You don't even have to do that when you're trying to get a guide, but just don't, I, what I mean by play hard to get is just don't be so forward. And you say you already don't do that. So. And the last question, which I pretty much already answered to the person in a text typey, it was Coco Latida. Uh, they said, um, what's a good beginner staple kit of brushes? And, um, I have the Coastal Sense 252 brush roll. It's okay. Uh, it has some good brushes in it, but it doesn't have the staples that you need. I've heard Morphe brushes are good. I don't own any Morphe brushes, but I can tell you that if it's you need a fluffy blending brush, you need a good flat line like shaping brush, you need a good angled uh, flat brush, you need a good smaller crease brush, and um, you don't need a whole hell of a lot more than that. So uh, I would say you don't have to get a kit necessarily. Just getting a couple of brushes here and there would even be better than getting this giant kit because you get what you want. Sometimes in those big kits you get a bunch. You get like four or five really good brushes and then you get 15 brushes that suck ass that you're never going to use. So that's my opinion. And those are all of the questions from this Raw Advice series. So yay! I hope you guys like this video. Uh, Give it a thumbs up if you do. Also, if you guys would like to be updated when I put out new videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am trying, and I've been doing pretty good at it, putting up new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Really trying hard at that. Also, if you guys would like to, I post every single day on Instagram, so if you want to, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Those are all at Christie. I thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you at my next video. Bye.